Hi guys, in this video we're going to talk about mutations. We're going to look at what mutations are, some of the different types of mutations, the results of these mutations, and then briefly talk about the cause of So firstly, to define a mutation, a mutation is a change in DNA structure that leads to the incorrect polypeptides being produced. We already know that the genes in the DNA code for polypeptides. So when the genes code incorrectly or are mutated, uh, the wrong polypeptides are going to be produced. Uh, some of these will occur throughout a person's life. So firstly, to define a mutation, a mutation is when a change occurs in the DNA which leads to the incorrect polypeptide being produced. Uh, we know that the DNA, the chromosomes code, or the genes on the chromosomes code for polypeptides. So when one of those genes is mutated, it's not going to produce the correct polypeptide. And these occur throughout a person's life. Um, we'll look at a couple of causes for them later. But they're only going to be passed on from parent to offspring when the mutation occurs in the sex cell. So that's the really important mutations we're talking about. So there's a few different types of mutations. The first ones are point mutations. And point mutations occur when one nucleotide is changed for another. Uh, if it's changed for another, this causes a substitution. So this is because uh, <laughs> point mutations can occur either during DNA replication or transcription and occur when one base pair is changed. Now this could be one base being changed for another base called a substitution and the results of this are fairly minor. Basically in a whole polypeptide chain you're looking at one incorrect amino acid. If an insertion or a deletion occurs, so you have an extra or one less base pair in that chain, it's going to affect the whole polypeptide chain, or at least all of the amino acids that are produced after that mutation. And this is called a frame shift mutation, in that it changes the way that each of those three codons work by pushing the codon into the next, and the base pair into the next codon, and the base pair into the next codon. Uh, so this really can stuff things up. A gene mutation occurs when a large section of DNA mutates. And this can occur when crossing over occurs and goes wrong. So on an individual chromosome level, it may undergo a deletion where a section of DNA gets deleted. So it may go amplification where a section of DNA gets doubled or tripled. So we get more and more of that section of DNA, or it may go uh, undergo an inversion where a section of DNA gets swapped and turned back to front. And there's a couple of more mutations that occur when two or more chromosomes interact with each other. One being an insertion where a section of DNA from one chromosome is inserted into another or a translocation where a section of DNA from one chromosome is swapped with a section from another. Uh, both of these lead to mutations of both of those chromosomes. The last type of mutation is a non-disjunction mutation, and this occurs when the chromosomes do not split up evenly during meiosis. We have two phases of cytokinesis in meiosis. If the chromosomes don't split up perfectly neat, uh, this can result in more chromosomes in one of those daughter cells and less chromosomes than supposed to be in the other daughter cell. Basically, we've talked about all these different ways that mutations can occur. But generally, the point is that a mutated gene is going to produce a mutated protein. And this is a problem because it's not going to do what it's supposed to do and it won't be produced when it's supposed to be produced. An example of this is the CFTR channel protein. This is a channel protein in soft tissue that allows the water and chloride ions to move through it. If this uh, is mutated and doesn't produce the correct protein, for example, in the case of cystic fibrosis, 
this channel protein is not going to work correctly and therefore cause the disease cystic fibrosis with a thick mucus and building up in the lungs and on the soft tissue there. Occasionally, a new allele will be mutated. Most of these mutations result in pretty much instant cell death, uh, providing that doesn't occur. Uh, these will create a new allele. Now this allele may be selected against by evolution, which means that it won't be around for very long, or if it's not selected against too hard, it may permeate the population. An interesting example of this is the allele for sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia is where the uh, red blood cell does not form correctly and forms in this weird sort of shape. This can be a problem because the red blood cells shape helps it move around in the arteries without being, uh, or and mainly the capillaries, without clogging them up. Uh, also, sickle cell anemia uh, is not as good for carrying oxygen. However, people with sickle cell anemia seem to be resistant to malaria. So that's a new allele that has an upside and a downside that is caused by a mutation. And what causes these mutations? So as I mentioned before, they can occur spontaneously. So during uh, transcription, during replication, these mistakes get made as a spontaneous mutation. Uh, or they can be caused by mutagens. Now mutagen is any substance that causes mutations. So this could be a physical thing like radiation, uh, UV rays, X-rays, uh, or it could be a chemical that actually pulls those DNA apart and melts them together in the wrong way. In this video, we've talked about mutations being something that causes a change in the DNA so that polypeptides aren't produced correctly. We've talked about the different types of mutations being point mutations, gene mutations, and non-disjunction mutations. The results of these mutations being that the polypeptide is not made correctly or the wrong polypeptide is made and will not do what it's supposed to do. And the causes are that this can happen spontaneously, this can happen during DNA replication, or it can happen due to the presence of a mutagen. Thanks for watching guys. Peace out.